I have done a lot of digging into the game code, and I've created a number of useful resources, like a fish chart spreadsheet, or a daily luck prediction mod, but my flagship resource, by far, is my map predictor. This is a piece of software that when you provide details like your game seed and day, can give you the results of various random elements of the game. It also helps you to visualize the RNG and find patterns. Let's explore this. The first thing I want to show is crates. This is actually the first mode that I made for the predictor. Originally, this was just a mines predictor and originally it was just for crates. So when I set the floor number here, it gives you the floor layout of floor one and it shows you what the contents of crates would be if there was a crate on that tile. Something to point out here is that there is a filter that you can change and just tick the things that you're interested in. So if there was a crate on this tile right here on floor one, on the first of spring year one, that would contain an amethyst. Every time it would contain an amethyst. An interesting thing to note about the crates is that the seed does not matter. These results are what you get every save. It's not tied to your game seed. And everything moves to the left one each day. So when I increase the day by one, everything moves to the left one. This lets us have knowledge. You are not going anywhere, Gordon. You will enjoy these pets. You will settle down. You will be my mascot. You will be loved. Okay, you good? Because that gives us knowledge like on floor 24 of the mines on the 5th of spring every on every run well fully so on floor 24 on the 5th of spring we can see the position of a club this is very useful for speed runs and challenge runs and pretty much any kind of run that you're into the mines on day five and you can see how that moves across the platforms as the days go so there's a club available from day five all the way to day 10. The thing that actually made me first make this predictor was this tile right here. On floor two, on the fifth of spring, a crate there gives a club. And Chikorita was the one who first pointed it out. That there always seemed to be a club there. So I dug into the code, I saw that the seed didn't matter and it made me want to make something like this in order to be able to see what the contents of the crates will be. Similar to crates, we have monsters. This is the item that you'd get from a boss monster and the item that you get depends on the tile that you kill them on. So again, this moves to the left one each day, but it is not reliant on the seed. The first mode I added that was reliant on the seed is this stones mode. You'll notice how the controls here change depending on the mode. The controls that will affect what you see on the screen, that affect the predictions, are coloured in this peachy colour. And the ones that have no effect are just kept white. So this is the opposite of the crates and the monsters, in that the seed does matter, but the day doesn't. The grid that you get, your ladder grid, your geode grid, your copper grid, is set to the seed. It doesn't matter what day you have, you will get the same results. So some things that you'll notice here is that everything that you see here is for breaking a rock on the floor. So this can tell you where ladders will be, it can tell you where geodes will be, where copper will be. Do you notice a pattern with the ladders? It was after I put this mode into the predictor that we saw that there was a ladder pattern which is a knight's move down to the right. You may wonder why some of these ladders are green and some of them aren't. When there are no monsters left on a floor, then you have a 4% boost to the chance that is checked when the game checks if you get a ladder. So that's what these green ones represent. These are spots, these are locations for rocks that will give you a ladder if you have no monsters left on the floor. Other things that affect this is your daily luck which can go to point 0.1 luck buff, which I think can just keep going up and up and up and up and up. I don't think I've got a limit on that. Note how the monster ladders are the first to be converted to regular ladders. And finally, stones. The number of stones remaining on the floor affect ladder chances. So as this number goes down, more spots appear. Very slowly to begin with, but as this number approaches zero, the change is more rapid. Here we go, boom. 
when there are two rocks remaining on the floor so when you break the second to last rock you're guaranteed a ladder i set this to 100 because it's a high number chances are that if you have a rock in these spots here you will get a ladder and then you've got spots of geodes and copper if you tick this one here if a ladder exists so if a freebie or a rock ladder exists you can see how the drops change and then also over here we have what will drop from different types of nodes so copper nodes if there's a copper node on these spots here it shows you how many pieces of copper ore you'll get from them and how that changes when you when letters exist if you want to go into the skull caverns there's a skull caverns mode over here which lets you change the layouts and if you want to make it even easier on yourself you can upload screenshots and this will overlay your predictions over the screenshot that you put up and that everything aligns perfectly. You still have to set your floor, but effectively puts a louse in there for you and you can reduce things like this transparency here in order to see what ladders are over rocks. That's a cool feature there. You can upload a screenshot. Actually, it's worth pointing out um, difficult mines, difficult skull caverns. This only really affects the crates. Volcano it's this is only basic this only shows you the layout of the volcano and if it's flipped or not you can use this to find locations of golden walnuts and coal i do plan on expanding on this in the future to fully show you what your volcano will look like that is fully seated it is possible it's just going to be a bit of work all right let's move over to locations so there's two combo boxes here you have this box here which will load the map with the different locations all preloaded so that is all the different locations cool you may think you can get different screenshots of the game but the beauty of this comes into the mode there is a lot of modes in here so we're going to skip analyze file for now we'll come back to that at the end we are going to look at artifacts first and let's bring the transparency back up artifacts show you what you will get from an artifact spot if an artifact spot was on that location so you can see that there is a huge grid of all the different possible drops this here is tied into the location that you set because different locations have different items so see here you got your ancient seed you got your trilobite you got your prehistoric skull you got your dino eggs if you then go to the beach you then have your starfish you have your anchors you have your nautilus fossils you have trilobites again palm fossils our shards if you go into town you can see how everything changes if you go to the forest you can see how everything changes this is tied into the day and the seed as the day goes up the grid moves up so see this line of books here day goes up everything moves up one as the day goes up everything moves up one so that's quite cool a feature that i haven't shown off yet is this here file upload save upload save lets you choose a save and that will then enter things like what the day is like what your seed is what your daily luck is your minor skill your luck buffs your professions and then it also lets you use your save file when looking at this so if we have a artifact spot because it's quite a lot to look at this yes this is a lot of items however if we go to the desert and we take this use save file option we will see just the artifact spots that exist so that one there and down here golden relic from the artifact spot down there very useful being able to upload bubbles this will show you the location of bubbles when they start and when they end so over here you got more bubbles there's a interesting interaction with bubbles bubbles do not despawn when you go to bed if you have bubbles existing somewhere when you go to bed those bubbles will still be there the next day at 6am if you go back to them they will still be there in order to see when those bubbles will despawn we've got this option here bubbles exist at start of day if you tick that an entry is shown at the top left wherever the bubbles exist coming in to day two on the seed they will last until 9 50. if you reload from save there will be no bubbles there also with bubbles we have this panning option if you tick panning it will show you where the panning spots will be when they spawn when they despawn and what the item will be that you get out of them Panning is a little bit different in that it's possible to get different results once you have panned a spot. Since a lot of this RNG relies on does a spot currently exist or not. If a spot does not currently exist, the game will try to place bubbles or panning. If the spot does exist, it'll try to despawn them. 
Uh, if you want to see all of the painting items, there's this painting items mode. It just fills the grid with what would be in each spot if a painting spot existed. And you can see how these spots move one to the left every day. And you can see how it all changes with uh, different luck. So you can use this to try to spot some lucky rings. Where is the lucky ring? So right now, no lucky rings possible. This is affected by daily luck. So with a good daily luck, you can see all the lucky rings. And, with, and that's with the luck buff as well. All right, what do we have next? We, after bubbles, we have crab pots. Crab pots is, crab pots does not work properly. That's why I have beta there. There's something to do with the ordering of the items that you can get from crab pots that I'm not fully accounting for. So the best thing you can do for this is just understand that as the day goes up, the whole grid moves up one. So if you want a lot of crabs and you get a crab from a crab pot there, if you want it the following day, you move the crab pot up one and then you move it up one, then you move it up one, then you move it up one. Uh, crop quality amounts. Let's go back to the farm for this. Crop quality and amounts shows you what quality crops will be when you harvest them. The important date for crop quality is the date that you harvest. The date that you plant has nothing to do with anything other than when it's going to be fully grown. Crop quality is not dependent on when you plant, it's dependent on when you harvest. And if you harvest them on different days, you can get different quality crops. You can use this mode to see how these spots change and relate to each other as farming level goes up. You can see how there's sort of these square patterns here. You'll also notice that no gold spots are ever taken away, they're only ever added to. No silver spots are taken away, except when they get upgraded to gold. Also see what fertilizer does. Fertilizer adds spots similar to the farming level goes up. Also of note is this thing here crop there's a number of different crops in here so you can see that when you harvest a cranberry most of the spots you get are going to be two but sometimes you can get a third cranberry sometimes you can get a fourth cranberry when you look at unmilled rice sometimes you get bonus unmilled rice when you look at hot peppers sometimes you can get bonus hot peppers you can occasionally get some extra bonus crop no matter what is planted which is dependent on daily luck and luck buff. So with a luck buff of one, you harvest any crop here. You harvest a sweet gem berry here, and you get two of them. You get two ancient fruit, you get two parsnips. Then we come to potato. So you can get multiple potatoes. Something that I used in my spring 18 marriage run was a spot like this. 20 potatoes from one spot. One potato plant can give 20 potatoes. Also note how there's multiple 20s as they go down. The calculations that goes into these spots is exactly the same. It repeats across the farm. You move 11 to the right and you move 7 up and you get the exact same RNG results. Also note what happens when the day goes up one. The spots move 3 to the right and 2 up. So keep a close eye on this spot right here. When I move the day up one, this 20 is going to move there. Watching watching boom so the spots move three right two up and they repeat every 11 7 or 7 11 all right that is crop quality and amounts what is next fish pond fish pond relies on setting a type these are all the categories as specified in the game catfish desert fish fresh water crab pots this shows you when you are going to get what items the important tile is the top left the top left tile of the fish pond is what you use to determine what you'll get from it. And it's the morning of the day. So if you have a fish pond with the top left tile here, and it's got catfish in it, on the morning of spring 15 year one on this seed, you'll get one catfish row. And you can see how, as the population goes up, you can see how all these spots increase, and you can see what items you'll get from all the different kinds of fish. So. For example, the rainbow trout is the one that can give you prizzies very, very rarely. So rare in fact that it is. Most days do not have the option of getting a prizzy. Eventually you'll see one. There, there, there. And the RNG repeats right to up one. Like it's the, it's the exact same RNG again. And no other prizzies there. So very, 
very rarely will you ever hit a prismatic shard with having 10 rainbow trout in a pond. You can also click this quest button here which will show you at the different population levels what the fish will request. Again top left tile of the fish pond is the important one. So population hitting 5, population hitting 7. So you can place the fish pond on specific tiles to get your requests. Alright what's next? Flower planting. This one's cool. This I said before that with the crop quality it does not matter when you plant it for the colour of a flower the plant day is the important factor. Also note that the seed does not matter for flower planting. The only thing that matters for flower planting, planting is the day of the month. Most things are tied into days played which gives you the day, the season and the year. Flower planting is just the day of the month. So if I change the season here everything stays exactly the same. So the day that you plant a flower seed on a tile determines what color that flower will be. And I used this mode in my creating artwork in Ginger Island. I made a sunset scene using crops, using flowers, which you can see here. Editor's notes add in the picture. There's fairy rose, summer spangles, blue jazz, poppy tulip so if you want specific patterns you can use this mode to help you plan that out all right what is next forage quality similar to crop quality is determined by the tile and the day that you pick it up you can see how it changes as the skill goes up and then you also have the options here to see with gatherer what spots will give you two of a of a forage item when you pick it up and you can also see how that changes when you have botanist botanist ensures that everything is going to be iridium so everything is iridium and every day it goes up the pattern moves one to the left giant crops there used to be a pattern to giant crops but i think as of 1.3 it changed no one it changed on 1.4 so there used to be a obvious pattern here and every day they moved up one but not anymore it was randomized still seeded but it was randomized so this here shows you where giant crops will appear if the criteria is met and it's for the morning so for the morning of summer 21 if there is a fully grown melon on this tile here on the middle tile and it was watered the previous day and the surrounding eight tiles are also melon any stage watered or unwatered they could be seeds it could have just been planted the day before if the middle tile is fully grown and watered on the morning of the 21st of summer it'll convert to a giant crop here and you can see all the spots there and you can see that they all jump around there's no pattern to this well there may be a pattern but i haven't explored it enough and then if you want to see how many crops will drop from your giant crop there's this mode the top left tile is the important one for this this is also a good use of this minimum filter. So if you only want to see the 20s and 21s, or if you just want to see the 21s, you can specify the amount in this filter up here. You can see an example of a giant crop converting with only the middle crop being fully grown and watered in the TAS marriage speedrun. Okay, next is large stumps with Forester. When you have the Forester perk, the large stumps have a 50-50 chance of giving an extra piece of hardwood. So for example on the foraging farm you have the large stumps over to the left. This will show you, again it's the top left tile that's important, this will show you what crops will give the extra piece of hardwood when you have forested. The large logs will always give a bonus 2, there's no RNG at all, it just gives you 2 pieces of extra hardwood. The stumps is a 50-50 chance. Owl slash strange capsule, not as important as of 1.5, the mode seems to be broken anyway. This would show you what 50 tiles are considered when trying to drop a stone owl or strange capsule. 1.4 and prior, every single tile needed to be open and being able to place a piece of furniture on it. As soon as one of those was the farmhouse, as soon as one of those was the water, you would not get a strange capsule or a stone owl that night. As of 1.5, any tile needs to be available. Uh, panning items, we've already looked at that. Recycling, this one is tied into the time. If you load trash into a recycling machine on 
these tiles at 6 a.m. it shows you the item you'll get at 6 10 shows you the item that you'll get so soggy newspaper if you want cloth you put a seed maker there you put your soggy newspaper in at 6 10 and when that finishes you will have a piece of cloth similar to recycling are seed makers seed makers here have a few different options if you just want to get three seeds from a crop you load it at the time shown here if you want to get four mixed seeds for whatever reason you load it on these times here if you want to get an ancient seed out of these seed makers you load it at these times at these locations yes it does work in a shed if you want to do this in a shed you will need to upload a screenshot that you take off your shed but all of these tile locations are based on the top left this here is zero zero any location will work as long as the tile location coordinates hit. you can see how things move around as the time goes up you can see how it goes over an entire day white days are invalid or white numbers are invalid times but it's still useful to see how the entire pattern moves interesting to note that as you move 10 tiles to the left the time goes up 10 so this is using the exact same rng result six o'clock there six ten there exact same rng result x goes down by 10 and time goes up by 10 stones this shows you what you will get from a stone outside of the mines when you break it coal geode extra bit of stone two coal from there interesting to note that if the days played is greater than 60 i.e 61 you can get frozen geodes if the day is greater than 120 i.e 121 you can also get magma geodes this is not tied into how far you have traveled in the mines that's just purely based on the number of days that have been played. Supply crates is a cool one for the beach farm. This does change based on the seed, but it doesn't change. He's back. Chat, he's back. But it doesn't change based on the day. And you can also see what items you'll get when your house is upgraded. So if you get a supply crate, there's no point waiting till following day to break it unless you're up upgrading your house. Okay, tilling. Welcome to clay farming. You can see what tiles are tilled to get clay and you can see how it moves as the number of dirt till goes up. So Piano Addict used the predictor, used this mode to come up with his patterns. And you can see what spots will give to clay if you have generous. Tree felling. If there is a tree on the tiles that you see here and you chop it down, you will get this many seeds from it. I've just used acorns for, to signify with the seeds. So you can plant you can look ahead and you can plant strategically in order to get yourself a whole heap more seeds. This will also show you how much hardwood, how many pieces of hardwood you will get from a tree on a location if you have the lumberjack perk. And you can see how that moves. And that moves just like crops. Moves across three, up two. So that eight is going to move there. Steer at that tile right there. You got it? You're staring at it? Boom. Eight pieces of hardwood. This mode will also let you use the save file so that if you also have a screenshot you can see or you can easily see what trees can drop multiple seeds. Seeds do apply to mahogany trees as well. Alright, we are almost there. Tree shaking, this one requires you to upload the save file because the information for this is held in the save file that just shows what trees you can shake in order to get a seed out of. So that's a lot of modes. Other options we have in here, you can save the current map that's shown on here to a file. Upload the map, upload the save. You can see the save version. This changes a few things for mainly for crate contents. They change when you get to the bottom of the mines. That's why I've got crate settings reached bottom over there. Um, Calico Jack. Here's a little bonus mode. This was useful in my Killing a Mummy in an Hour challenge. This shows you what the results of Calico Jack hands are going to be. So if you come here on 10th of spring year 2 and you hit twice you'll get 21. If you hit once you'll get 10 and the dealer will bust out on 22. If you just stand you'll stand at 16, dealer will bust out on 22. So you can use this for getting runs that you can use for double or nothing. These grey lines here with a negative 1, you cannot win. doesn't matter what you do, what order you hit and stand. So where you hit, where you stand, you cannot win these hands. There's still lots of double or nothing. Interesting to note that times played is reset. When you go back to title, times played is not stored in the save file. So it's just reset to zero. Uh, that's the Calico Jack mode. We have a summary mode, which will which summarizes the forage that exists on the map. 
the artifact spots that exist on the map, the trees, uh, if they're shakers and basically location of trees, how many seeds you got that you can chop down to get to, and stone, just the stones that will give you extra drops, coal, stone, geode, and the mountain and the quarry, all that good stuff there. That's the summary mode that requires you to upload your save. Billboard, what quests and who they're for, and the item that's requested, if any, or the different kind of quests. The item delivery quest changes based on the number of people that you've met. Well, for the or the person that you met and the order that you met them in, it can change the item delivery quest and the item. These items can change with the knowing the furnace recipe, having access to the desert, and the number of cooking recipes that you know. It doesn't matter the exact recipes that you know, just the number. If I rework this form, I'm going to remove this table and just have a box that you can set the number of recipes that you know. The intent in the code is to have cooking recipes as item delivery quests, but there is a code bug that never lets you have them as an item, but they do adjust the RNG. Uh, resort of visitors may be a little bit inaccurate, but we'll show you who will go to the beach resort on which day. There's a potential bug I need to investigate for that. Island settings, some of the things at the island will change based on whether you have unlocked this bridge or opened the cave. So if we come to artifacts, look at everything and then we will open the bridge. You see that the snake skulls are now possible to get from artifact spots. And then if we open the cave, nothing happens. Opening the cave, what does that do? I can't quite recall the changes that the cave does. Crate settings, if you've reached the bottom, it can, as of 1.5, it can change items. That's when you can get uh, your earth crystal, your frozen tear, and your fire quartz from crates, only after you've reached the bottom. Miscellaneous settings, suppress quality display. This was added at the request of Piano Addict. When looking at crop quality amounts, you can just turn the display of the quality off and then help gives you the version of the projector that you're on and then here's a very important form here you can click paypal to send me some money email that gives you my blade stv email and discord link there's also this documentation button hasn't been updated for a while i put in some a little bit of effort into some documentation for the map projector it is out of date it does need to be updated most of the information in here will be accurate, just some things about the display might be different. There are a few missing modes in here. Last edit was on July 10th, 2021. There have been map predictor updates since July 10th, 2021. Ah, you may be wondering where you can get this predictor from. I have this predictor uploaded on Nexus Mods. Here is the mod page here, map predictor. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.